Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome again, dear students, with the course of vocabulary and study skills, which is taken from the book, mostly from the book English Vocabulary in Use Elementary. Today we are discussing Unit 2 Learning Vocabulary. It means how to learn vocabulary. So the main unit is about how to develop your vocabulary. So how here is more important as we said in the previous lesson from, uh, how, more important than what to learn. So it's very important to, to examine or to care about the quality of learning not the quantity. Here it's all about learning vocabulary. So we'll learn some strategies, some ways, some techniques that help us to improve our vocabulary. For example, as it is in the title, collocations, pictures, diagrams can help us expand, develop our vocabulary. Let us come to the, the beginning of this unit, which starts with a tip. What is a tip? A tip is a piece of advice for you. To give you pieces of advices is better than giving you what to learn, only teaching you vocabulary and that's all. It will not be of much benefit than telling you, giving you a piece of advice that will help you to develop the vocabulary yourself. One tip which is very important here is keeping a vocabulary notebook. You have to have a vocabulary notebook. If you don't have, you have to buy one. And keep that notebook only for vocabulary because you will come across many w new words and if you don't write them down you will forget them easily so learning needs patience you have to have a vocabulary notebook and write down words that you learn if you said I have today my mobile phone, I can use the notebook of uh, that exists or notepad that is there in what in my mobile phone. It's okay, but a vocabulary notebook will help you easily to deal with adding, deleting and improving it. And a vocabulary notebook you will be at ha will be handy any time you want it, it's there with you, not like electronic devices. Sometimes if the battery is dead or something happened, you might not bet. It's helpful. It's helpful. Today, this is the era of technology. You can use mobile phones, laptop or tablets or whatever. But you have to keep a vocabulary notebook, whether it is electronic or it's paper. And with a vocabulary notebook, you have to insert new words frequently, daily. Whenever you come across new words, write it down. Then with a vocabulary notebook, you need another thing. What is it? You need a good dictionary. Not any dictionary, but good dictionary that will help you. The more features a dictionary has, the more beneficial. So use a good dictionary for checking the meaning of words, checking the pronunciation, checking the word class that we have studied last time is the, the new word is a noun or is it a verb and how to change it from a verb into a noun, all these things. So a dictionary can give you a lot of things. It's helpful. Also you can use it for doing what? For doing exercises, 
especially if something you don't understand in, in the instructions, you can check. Or sometimes some instructions tell you to use a dictionary to translate or to find meaning. So it is necessary to have a dictionary because you are a learner of a language. So without dictionary, you won't be successful in learning the language. Okay, example of good dictionaries, though they are not in the book, Cambridge, Cambridge Learner's Dictionary, Oxford, or Longman Active Study Dictionary, or any other type of what? Of dictionaries that suits you. So whatever dictionary you feel like it's of benefit to you, you can use it. Not necessary to what? To focus on only these dictionaries. So Longman Active Study Dictionary, the end of it is not complete. There is why and uh, or, uh, or why is missing in this word, but um, we can do it later. Come here, some ways of writing down words you want to learn. If you said, I have a notebook for vocabulary, only for vocabulary, not for li uh, no, don't use only one notebook for writing your lecture notes in the, in the lecture hall and for vocabulary. Specify only one notebook, only for vocabulary. So if you ask, so how can I put, write down or insert the words in that notebook? There are ways. One of the good ways, which is very helpful and it will help you to memorize and to know, to understand many words easily, is to write down words that go together, words that come together. In English, we have certain words always go together. Example, when you say seat, so there are words comes with seat, a seat in a plane, for example. So we have different seats. We have a front seat, back seat, aisle seat, window seat, car seat, and different types of seats. So we use these words together, and this term is called what? Collocation. Let us give another, we will talk in detail about this, another way to write down words you learn is to learn words in families, words, family, words. For example, when you say furniture, this is a family and under each family we have members of the family like like the family that we know a family it has members like father mother brother sisters and so on same thing furniture it's a family it's a general term under which we have some related or examples of that family like uh, for when it's table when we say chair door these are parts of the furniture another way is to draw pictures don't say i don't know drawing everyone can draw simple drawing is it difficult to draw a tree is it difficult to draw a man using a stick figures, it's not difficult. Is it difficult to draw, for example, a pencil or a pen? Sometimes it's, it's, it's not difficult for most of the people. So draw pictures and diagrams is, is also a good way to help you improve your vocabulary and a good way to help you put words together in your notebook. So three ways. One, to write down words that go together. And the second one, learn words in families. And 
the last one is to draw pictures and diagrams let us come to the first one what is to write down words that go together collocations what is a collocation a collocation collocations are words that are used together words that are used together is called what are called collocations so a collocation is a group of words that are used together it usually it is two and it might be three in some cases example to do the exercises so here do goes with exercise we don't say to do or to make exercises we say to do the exercise but we say to make mistakes we say to make mistakes another so in your notebook you need to write what to write do exercise and make a mistake to do an exercise and to make a mistake write down it like this so you will remember it that do comes with exercise and make is used with what with mistakes so don't say I did a mistake no you say I made a mistake more examples for this to go by train look the difference here if you walk you say I go by we don't say I go by foot you say I go on foot I go to school on foot but notes if you go by car or by train or by bus we use the word by so we say by train but we say on foot here we have collocations two words one is a preposition and the other is a noun another example good at languages a common mistake some students say I am good in English no the correct thing is good at English so here we use adjective and preposition good is an adjective and at is a preposition a tall man a tall man is another what is another example of collocation we don't say long man we don't say high man we say a tall man so tall is used with with the word man but we don't say high man or long man so we say a tall building also we don't say a long building but for street we say long road long street but we don't say tall street so certain words come together and other words are not acceptable in this case you need to check the dictionary or here is here the collocations as the native speakers use them a tip for you always write down collocations with new words so try to always write down collocations with new words if you have learned a new word try to what to search for other words that come with it the other point or the other way that you can use when you want to write words in your notebook is to learn words in families for example look here we have word family like temperature this is a general word under which you will find some other words like hot warm and cold travel also travel is a general term under travel you will find several other words like ticket passport suitcase and different uh, other different words so temperature is a word family travel is a word family and hot worm cool cold all these words 
goes under temperature. Ticket, passport, and suitcase, these goes under travel. A tip, another tip, another a piece of advice for you is to make a page for every different word family. So one page, put it like for furniture in your notebook and another page for travel, one page for sports. So put only under this big title all words that are related to it. So this is one way to help you learn words quickly and easily and to remember them also whenever you want them. One, the last way that is mentioned, there are many other ways, but these are three ways mentioned in this book. The last way is pictures and diagrams. Draw pictures, for example, a picture of a car like this one, then insert all new words in that picture. For example, wind screen, boot, window, wheel, door, headline, any other new words you learn them later, you can insert them in this picture. So this is one way to help you learn vocabulary quickly and associate vocabulary with each other. It's a helpful way and use it. Draw pictures, for example, a picture of a human body. Then whenever you know a new word related to the human body, you can insert it into that picture. Another, another example is draw diagrams. Put more words in as you learn them. For example, the draw a circle and write eat. And any word you learn later related to eat, like knife, fork, spoon, plate, kitchen, food, whatever, you can write it under what? Under something related to what? To eat. So when we need to eat, we use certain utensils like a knife, a fork, a spoon, a plate. These are all related to the, the verb eat. Then the verb drink. What are the containers that we use when we need to drink? So even you can write what are the things that we drink. So you say we use glass, cup, Junk, for example, mug, we can use things that we drink, different types of juices, for example, you can add. So whenever you learn new word related to the verb that you wrote in the middle of the diagram, add it to that place. This is a good way. So these are three ways to help you to do what? To uh, organize your notebook. One more tip, when you can use pictures and diagrams, whenever possible, try to use pictures and diagrams because these help you to organize your notebook, organize your vocabulary and remember them quickly and, e and use them easily. So whenever possible, if there is a possibility for drawing pictures and diagrams, use them instead of using words because they said that a picture paints a thousand words. So pictures is, is recommended. Using pictures, diagrams are more recommended than using what? Using words because they save the time, save the space, organize your notebook and many other benefits. One more tip, which is the last tip. Revise the words you have written down. It's not, not enough. It's not enough to write down words and then leave the notebook aside. You have to come again and again and again and look at 
your notes, open them, try to develop them, to reorganize them, try to revise, study them again and again, because this type of act will help you to fix these vocabulary in your mind and it will help you to remember them if you want to use them in speaking or in writing. As we said at the beginning that learning needs patience. You have to be patient if you want to learn. So it's not enough to insert vocabulary in your notebook, but you have to revise them from time to time and try to use them when you speak, try to use them when you write. This is the end of the unit and let us come to the exercises of the unit. Look at unit 2 of the book or sorry, look at unit 3 of the book, unit 3, the unit that will come after this unit. How many more collocations for half could you write in your vocabulary notebook? So you can draw a diagram for the word have and then write under that or inside that paragraph, uh, that, that diagram, write inside that diagram all words that are related to what? To it. For example, have, we can say have a party, have a shower, have lunch, have a lesson, have a cup of tea, have a meeting, have a shower, as we said, have a shower and different things. We can have breakfast and th different things we can have. So have has different meanings. So try to organize your notes like this, which is very helpful. You can do another similar exercises like think of the word do. What are the things that we do? Or the word make. What are the things that we make? We said we can, we, we say to make a mistake, not to do a mistake, but to do an exercise, not to make an exercise. So think, think of the things that we do and think also, uh, think of the things that we make as, as a similar exercise to this one. Another exercise in the book. Which words can go with weather? So again, you can, this is a family. If you remember, we call it word family. So under which many other words, like these words. Like what words? These words are related to what? To weather. Wet, dry, warm, cool, and rain. But a word like happy, a word like big, it doesn't belong to what? To the weather family. So in this, these two exercises, you can see that we use it in the first one, a diagram. And in the second one, we are using what? We are using word families. So, the other exercise, 2.3, there are two word families here. What are they? Put them in the table, use a dictionary. Look, he said you need to use a good dictionary to help you decide what are the word, the two word families and what are the words that goes under each family. For example, the first one, is education and the second one is weather. Under education, we have words in the, fa the same family, the school teacher exam and a student. And under weather, we have rain, sun cloud, snow and ice. See, always our mind feel relaxed. Our mind feel rela feels relaxed when it what? When we insert organized information into it. But if we don't have organized information, the mind will find difficulty to accept and process it. So these things, 
these strategies, these techniques help us to organize what the information in the brain and this will make it easy for us to recall them later. Okay, another exercise is draw simple pictures to help you remember these words as in the example. Example to cry. So it says draw simple pictures. Is it difficult to draw a picture of the word cry? I don't think so. So look at this picture. This picture represents the verb cry. Another picture, you need a picture of a plane. A plane lands or sunny weather or under the table. Look here, the plane lands. So draw a picture because it is fun. Sunny weather, it's easy. Just draw a sun. A sun. And that's all. A table underline under the table. So this is the meaning. Now we wrote the meaning of the words by using pictures. So picture is a fun. Picture makes it easy for us to remember words. Let us come to point 2.5. Put words in the empty circles. Put words. We have here a diagram of clothes. So we have two words related to it. Dress hat. You can think of any other words related to clothes. For example, shirt, trousers, or what is there like jacket, shoes. And there are many other words that can go under this diagram. Another diagram is furniture. We have mentioned this example before. So a signet, uh, for furniture, we can uh, add to chair and desk other things like table, other things like bed, and many other uh, words that can go under furniture. I think this is the end of the, this episode or this lesson. And thank you for listening. What I need you now is after studying this unit together, you have to revise it to do the exercises yourself. And a, a piece of advice or a tip for you is to do the exercises in pencil. So later you can erase them and do them again and see if you can do progress by not committing the mistakes that you have done in the first trial. Thank you.